Am I overreacting? My husband went to a bachelor party where escorts stayed at the villa. Last weekend, my 35 female husband, 38 male, went to a bachelor party in Cancun. The best man booked a private villa that is out of the main city and pretty secluded, but it's fully staffed, right on the water, and has plenty of rooms for everyone in their small group to have their own. My husband didn't really want to go because we've been so busy with work and other trips this summer. He told the groom and the best man that he was out, but they were adamant about him going, said they couldn't imagine it without him. So the best man bought my husband a non-refundable plane ticket and basically said that he wasn't taking no for an answer. My intuition was screaming that something about this wasn't on the up and up. I couldn't put my finger on it, but I just had this yucky feeling in my gut. The week of, the best man sends out an itinerary which includes dress attire details. Stuff like, bring your best swim trunks like you're dressing to impress at a Vegas pool party, and plant theme nights such as Black Light Night and Miami Vice Night. My husband and I laughed thinking it was silly to be dressing to impress at a sausage fest, but we figured that the best man was trying to make it fun since it was such a small group of them. But my intuition was gnawing at me again. The afternoon they arrived at the villa was fine. Hubby sent me photos and a video walkthrough of his bedroom to show me the view of his balcony overlooking the ocean. We texted about a lot of work stuff. We have a business. But I could tell later that night that something was different just based on the change of tone of his text. I just figured that they were busy, didn't text him anymore, and tried not to read too much into it. The next morning, their first one there, my husband posts on his Instagram story a photo of a breakfast table at the villa. Nothing special, but it just had a pretty view of the pool and ocean background. Later that morning, I happened to look at the villa's Instagram and saw that they reposted a tagged video from a woman's story. It was of her and two other women eating breakfast, and she panned over the table and out to the view of the pool and ocean. I figured it was probably the people who stayed there at the villa before our husbands arrived, and the villa had just gotten around to reposting it. Until something caught my eye at the dining table. It was one of the decorations for the bachelor party. I saw the same thing in my husband's story, too. I thought, that can't be right. But after quadruple checking, it was the same effing decoration that our husbands had set up specifically for the bachelor party. I then went to this woman's profile and looked at her other stories and saw that those women were actually there at the villa the night before, dressed up for the black light night, were partying at the villa, and were now having breakfast, meaning they effing stayed the night there. I admit that I stalked this woman's Instagram the majority of the day. One of her stories showed her and the women hanging out in the pool and all of our husbands in the background. Then she posted a photo of all of them sitting around the table gambling together. She was sitting right next to my husband. I was able to see one of the other women's stories as well, and she actually had her OF links in her bio, and I was able to see her ex account with full X-rated stuff. I lost my effing mind. I immediately called my husband to confront him, and at first he tried to lie, until he realized that I actually knew and wasn't just trying to bait him for info. He said that he didn't know what to do. The best man said that he had a surprise after they arrived at the villa, and apparently it was these escorts staying there with them for the entire trip. My husband said that he planned to tell me when he got home, but figured if he told me while on the trip, I would tell the other wives, and he would have basically fried the other husbands there because it would have gone nuclear. I've never been so livid. How on earth would anyone think this is appropriate for strange women to be staying there? None of those men are single. The best man has put all of his friends in a position of being trapped at a secluded villa with escorts and nowhere else to go. And now they have to keep a secret and lie to their wives and fiancés so they aren't the right of the friend group that outed everything. Am I overreacting or is this absolutely insane for someone to think that this is appropriate? My instinct was right when I found out to tell the other wives, but I wasn't sure if they had given their stamp of approval on this. And I was just the clueless wife whose hubby never told her of the plans. My understanding now, based on conversations I've had with my husband since he got home, is that I'm the only wife that I found out and knows about this. Do I tell the other wives? Do I risk hurting the marriages of my friends with a truth bomb? I feel like I'm part of the disrespectful, dirty secret by keeping this info for my friends. Story time about how I texted all the women in my boyfriend's phone to tell them that I was pregnant with his child. My boyfriend has a lot of female friends. In fact, that's how our relationship started out. We're both dancers and we met at the same dance conservatory. This means we are constantly surrounded by people our age who are always trying to go out and have fun. I moved to New York City in the hopes of becoming a rock at. It's when I was completely devoted to dancing. In my world, there's nothing but dancing and working out. So the moment I met my now boyfriend, I was smitten. When he comes into the room, people gravitate towards him, especially the girls. Because yes, he is attractive and he's a dancer so you can imagine what his body looks like he's graceful but masculine he's sensitive but strong before he and i ever talked i just assumed he was a huge player he was always with a new girl every single day and i don't mean like with her with her just like talking to her walking to classes but everything changed the moment we were partnered our dance teacher stopped the class only to have everyone watch us dance for the next 40 minutes he said that our bodies were made for each other and after that class he would not leave me alone he chased me for about three months you're never gonna guess what happens part two is a story time but I texted all the women in my boyfriend's phone and told him that I was pregnant with his child. After he began chasing me for two months, I felt like the luckiest girl in the world. Every single girl in our conservatory wanted to be with him, but he was chasing me. The best part is, our teacher paired us up for the rest of the semester. This meant that we had to dance together every single day, go to rehearsals together. Like I said in part one, in my world, there was only dancing and working out. I did not have time for a relationship, but against my better judgment, I decided to say yes. From one day to the next, our relationship was as serious as it could possibly 
really get. Felt like I wasn't ready for it, but I wanted to be. We were together all day long, dancing together, going to get lunch, rehearsing, and he even switched over to my gym and we would work out together. And magically, all the girls went away. There weren't any girls chasing him anymore. And for a moment in time, everyone wanted to be us, be with us. I even started getting more attention from boys than I did before. But one day, I see messages coming into his phone. The jealousy I felt in my body, I swear to God, it was poisoning me. And when I asked him who it was, he said it was just a dancer from school. Part three is up. Story time about I texted all the women in my boyfriend's phone to let them know that I was pregnant with his child. When I saw that message come through, the jealousy I felt was poisoning my body. I asked him and he said it was just one of the girls from school. And after this, I actually could not sleep. I felt nauseous and sick. And without even thinking about it, it was three in the morning. I grabbed his phone and I texted all the women in his phone. Every single one. And all I said was, stop trying to text me or contact me. I'm having a baby. And then I stayed awake for another two hours hoping that they would text me back so I could delete everything. I texted 70 something girls. That's how many girls he had saved in his phone. And then the most horrendous thing. They were not happy. From their responses, so many were like in love with him. A few of them were begging him to leave me. Saying things like the baby wasn't his and that I wasn't good enough for him. Right before I fell asleep, another message came in. One of the girls saying, it doesn't matter. I'll still see you tomorrow. Come to find out he had still been hooking up with girls. But he got upset when I told him that I texted everybody. So I told him that I would forgive him his sins if he forgave me mine. I know this is toxic, but I can't let go of this relationship. He's everything I've ever wanted. Am I taking things too far. I've been married to my husband, Fletch, for a couple of years, but the foundation of our partnership is based on a fundamental lie. I am a lesbian, Fletch is gay. The real issue is I've fallen head over heels for another woman, Ellen. She's always known that I was closeted and was comfortable with that when we were just friends with benefits. But now that's shifted, she's told me she wants to be exclusive, which I also desperately want, but can't do that if she has to go back in the closet for me. The ramifications of coming out are significant, but if I stay in the closet, I risk losing the person I think is the actual love of my life. What should I do? Hi team. In terms of updates, a few things have changed. Ellen and I parted ways. She decided that our potential love wasn't worth going back in the closet for, and that this was a case of the right person wrong time, or maybe that she would find another. It all ended rather badly for me, and I don't think I've quite emotionally recovered from it all, if I'm being frank. Fletch and I are leaving Australia. After the clusterfuck of a breakup with Ellen and the prospect that this might happen to either of us again, we thought it was best to just leave and get away from it all. We'll be living separately, but still be close by. We are the best of friends. I wish I could say I'm doing well, but this has taken a toll on me. I think I'm at the stage where I'm ready to blow the whole operation up and come out anyways. It's definitely something I'm considering once I leave the country. The duplicity is getting far too much to balance. In any case, that's the update from me. Sorry, it's not much. A big heartfelt thanks from me to you and the team, Bella. My wife is convinced that she is pregnant even though every pregnancy test store-bought and medical comes back negative. It's taking a toll on our marriage because she thinks I'm going to abandon her and our twins. I called up our primary doctor and told him about this problem. He seemed very concerned and wanted us to come see him the next morning. He said it was important to be gentle but not to feed into her delusions. I sat her down and we talked. All she wanted to talk about is when I would get the nursery started and that we were on a time crunch and how she has found a perfect color for the room. How she wants me to be more involved in her pregnancy. I tried to be very calm but I was very perturbed by seeing her that way. I asked her to go to the doctor with me tomorrow. She said Said yes that she wanted to check on the babies either way now i took some advice and words you guys gave me about being calm and asking a bit why she thinks that she's pregnant without calling her delusional so i did she kept changing subjects or saying that a mother just feels it you wouldn't know how it is then i said that i love her really so much that i would never think of leaving her but we needed to go to the doctor to confirm her gut feeling she got very agitated and was crying telling me that if i wanted to leave her i should simply leave but i shouldn't call her a liar somehow i managed to calm her down enough for her to go to sleep after she did i went on her computer i never snoop on her but i remembered a commenter pointing out forums about cryptic pregnancy and so i went for the lookout oh boy she was in two facebook groups one was a normal mommy facebook group and the other was a group about women that believed they were pregnant in the normal group she would post updates about her symptoms and pictures of her belly and her story about how she was almost not able to have children but but thanks to the grace of god that kissed her tummy the gift of life was given to her and how she was compensated for all the, these years of suffering with twins in the other group the women were quite literally and excuse me here effing insane 
they were feeding into each other's delusions, a woman said that she was almost two years pregnant and how sometimes it just takes longer. My wife was close there complaining about doctors that do not take her seriously and about me. So many women were making her fear that I would leave, saying things like men cannot stick to a woman. Many recounted their stories about how their marriages broke down because their spouses could not handle the pregnancy. I was really effing scared. I researched phantom pregnancies and I read somewhere that that could also be a sign of schizophrenia. So to say the least, I could not sleep. I was and still am very afraid of losing her. She woke up and I tried to act like nothing was wrong. We were going to the doctor and it was as if nothing had happened yesterday. My dad just decided he's not gonna pay for my wedding anymore. What I'm finding out is if you let your parent pay for your wedding, you kind of have to do it their way. I finally told my parents, I'm gonna do this my way and they backed out of paying for it. So let me tell you what happened. I have to give credit where credit is due. My parents raised me to be an independent thinker. And as an independent thinker, I've decided we're not gonna do every single wedding tradition at my wedding. And that's where the fight comes in with my dad. It's the year 2023. Women are not property anymore, which is why I decided I will be walking myself down the aisle. My parents do not own me and I'm not some property to be given away. My dad was not very happy to find out he wouldn't be walking me down the aisle. In his eyes, I'm taking away one of the most important parts of the day. Apparently, a first dance with my father isn't enough. My dad keeps going back to the point of, we've never treated you as property, why would you say that? He's also trying to say I'm discrediting everything him and my mom have done for me, which to me just feels unrelated. Like, I'm just not a fan of that tradition. I feel like he's been talking to his buddies because the other day he came back to me and said, well, if you want to be independent, then you can pay for it yourself. Which to me still feels like if you're not gonna do your wedding the way I want, then I'm not gonna pay for it. And that just doesn't feel right to me. So anyways, do we agree that my dad's being a complete jerk right now? Really hoping he comes around because there's no way I can afford this wedding if he doesn't help me with it. So I'm just kind of holding out hope that he'll come through. I, female 30, had to protect his niece from a pit bull and my husband, male 31, ran off. I've been ignoring him. Is this something that I should be forgiving him for? My husband, his niece, and nephew, and I were in the backyard. I'm gonna assume that the gate was open, but I can't remember. The pit bull came out of nowhere and latched onto his niece, five female. She screamed. I turned, kicked it with all the force I could manage. I was lucky enough to hit it in the jaw somewhere that made its jaw dislodge. My husband, who had been a few feet away, shouted. Something along the lines of, whose dog is this? I told him to get our bear spray from the house. I was in a panic. I am an animal lover, but it was so insane. The pit bull seemed almost rabid. I don't think it was in hindsight. It wasn't foaming at the mouth. It was just crazed. My husband ran, but not towards the house. He literally ran out of the fence gate and shut it behind him, not towards his niece or nephew, who was also present in an outdoor bassinet that I managed to all but toss into the picnic table to make sure it was out of the dog's reach, while holding his niece over my shoulder. I put her on the barbecue to keep her out of reach, but the dog was literally jumping and snapping, and I was worried that if I tried to carry her, I'm short, it would have managed to grab her out of my hands. It chased me when I ran, but then I swung at it, and I swung until it stopped. I don't think that I'll ever forget the sound or feeling. It was so high stress. I didn't even realize that it had bit me twice. I haven't spoken to him for almost a full week, even though we live in the same house. I didn't ask where he went. He only came back a few minutes later to pack us into the car and drive us to the hospital. He's getting angry that I'm giving him the silent treatment, but I feel like it's his fault that I had to possibly end an animal. If he had gotten the bear spray, I literally keep it in my purse for if I'm ever attacked by an animal or otherwise, then I don't think I would have needed to do what I did. It was literally just inside the door. He knows where I keep it. Instead, he literally took off to God knows where. Me and the two children that I'm not even related to could have died. It might not even be relevant, but I don't even like kids. I'm staunchly child-free and he's the one that offered us up to babysit for the weekend. I don't know. Is this grounds for divorce? I'm not sure that I can even look at him. Any attraction I had to him is pretty much gone. He tried to touch me yesterday just to move me so he could pass and I smacked his hand away without even thinking about it like he was some stranger at a bar because it was literally jarring. He's just been sulking around trying to talk to me and getting frustrated then sulking more. I wasn't expecting him to be macho and fist fight the freaking dog, but at least follow instruction? At least not leave me in a life or death situation with a toddler and an infant? Should I be able to talk this up to the moment in panic? I don't even know if I want to hear him out. My husband slept with my niece while I was away on a business trip. And this is the update. So my mom tried to talk to my niece and she basically said that she hates me and she's hated me for years. She said that I have everything and I didn't even have to work for it while she was left behind by her mother. And 
pitied for having a loser of a father. And on the other hand, I had a perfect career and a perfect life. That's what she said, like verbatim. I also had to end up returning back home because it will affect me in court if I don't let my husband see my daughter. But I returned home and my room was an absolute mess. My husband was cleaning up the mess with my mother when I got back. And I guess my niece had gotten rid of everything from my closet in my bedroom and she wanted to replace it with all of her stuff my mom told me that my husband had to literally grab my niece's arms to immobilize her because he she was hitting him and also he needed to grab her arms because she was trying to hit and kick my mom and he was trying to stop her my husband slept with my niece while I was away on a business trip. This is the update. And it's confirmed that she did actually attack my mother. My husband had to call a doctor to give her something to calm her down and it ended up working. And my husband will not stop asking me and begging me to forgive him for this. I have honestly never seen my husband so ruined. He was extremely upset and just kind of explaining himself out of the situation. My mom was also super upset because she said this isn't even the first time that my niece has attacked her when she gets angry and frustrated about something but my mom just never wanted to do anything about it because she felt like if she had something on her record it would ruin the rest of her life and she's already been through so much of course my brother my niece's dad just continues to be a loser and he's even trying to ask my husband for money because my husband slept with his daughter. It honestly seems like he is trying to like pimp her out or something. I mean, I don't know, maybe that's too much and I'm just assuming things, but that's really what it seems like. If I'm being completely honest, I really just want to get away and stop talking to all of them. I'm so done with them. There's this girl going viral on the internet right now because she flew all the way out to Scotland for one of her friend's weddings just to find out that she wasn't invited to eat dinner with all of the other wedding guests. For the sake of the story, we're gonna call our main character Amy. So Amy and her other friend Jill are invited to one of their friend's weddings in Scotland. And so they decide to book all of their travel arrangements together and go together all the way to Scotland for their friend's wedding. When they get to Scotland, they go to the bed and breakfast that they booked. It's run by this little sweet lady, and she offers to drive them to the wedding the next day. The day of the wedding, the bed and breakfast lady drives them to the ceremony. The ceremony is beautiful as expected. And after the ceremony, they remind everybody to go out to this other venue for the reception dinner. Amy and Jill call the bed and breakfast lady and ask if she can transport them over to the dinner. When they arrive for the dinner, they notice that there are seating charts at the entrance. So they're looking at the seating chart, trying to find their names on it to figure out where they need to sit. All of a sudden, the security person walks up and asks them to see their invitation. And they travel a long way, so they didn't think to bring their invitation. So they tell the security officer their name, Amy and Jill. He looks at the list and says, uh, you're not on the dinner list. Um, I do see you as a wedding guest, but you weren't invited to the dinner. Amy and Jill are super confused. They're like, why would we not be invited to the dinner, but just the ceremony? I mean, after all, we flew all the way to Scotland for this. The security guy lets them know that while they're not invited to the dinner, they can come back in an hour when the dinner's over to come dance and enjoy uh, cocktails. I forgot to mention the security guy also mentioned to Amy and Jill that at the very bottom of their invitation in small font, it indicated if they were a dinner guest or not. And Amy and Jill did not see this on the invitation because it was in small font at the bottom. Amy and Jill are pretty upset because they're in the middle of a place that they don't know anything about, Scotland, and they now have to figure out what they're going to do for dinner. And it's not like they could just walk down the street and go eat dinner somewhere else. They would have to travel to wherever they're going to now have to eat dinner. Not to mention, their ride is the bed and breakfast lady, and they did not tell the bed and breakfast lady that they would need another ride in between all of these things just to eat dinner. They decide, you know what, it's stupid for us to go eat dinner and then come back. So they decide to just call the bed and breakfast lady and get picked up and not come back. But what do you guys think about this? Is it weird to not invite your guests to dinner? 
Secrets are never forever. How do I deal with this? I'm 56 female and my husband 55 male have two children, 27 son and 30 daughter, four grandchildren. We've been married for 32 years. I want to keep this as short as possible, but I am so scared of what's going to happen with our lives now that this secret has come out. My son came and saw me a week ago. My husband was at work. We sat down and I knew something was wrong and I was concerned for him. I told him to just tell me what the problem was and we'll sort through whatever it was. He said he didn't know how to start, so he'll just put it all on the table and see what I have to say. I was getting very concerned at this stage, never thinking that what he would tell me could destroy our lives. My son told me that he took an ancestry DNA test because like his dad, he was interested in genealogy and he wanted to show his kids where they came from and the history. It still hadn't clicked at that stage. I thought that it came back with medical issues that may be present and express my thoughts. No mom, he said, that isn't the problem. The problem is that dad has no common DNA. I started shaking and went into shock. He asked if dad knows. I told him no. I didn't know until now. The secret I had kept for 28 years is no longer a secret. I knew that my son could have been a product of a mistake I had made early on in my marriage, but when he was born, he looked so much like my husband that I dismissed it and convinced myself that he was his. The mistake slash bad choice was when we were going through a tough time with my husband working long hours and we were struggling to get a deposit for a house. We were also trying for a second child. One of my husband's friends was in our lives and he was going through a breakup and we were trying to be supportive. My husband was at work and his friend and I were drinking and just talking about life. We got drunk and yes, we did the deed. I can't even remember it and the next morning his friend and I were both mortified and vowed to never bring it up again. It was such a long time ago, I can't even really remember it. Well, I fell pregnant and here we are. My husband is such a loving man and our marriage has always been so strong. My son wants me to tell him as he will find out soon through ancestry. How do I proceed? I'm disgusted that this is going to destroy my husband, my entire family. I know I was a POS back then for what I did. I cannot erase that, but the hurt that we're all going to go through, I cannot fathom. My husband has not found out yet, but I have to tell him before he finds out. This one is from Ella. My husband Patrick was acting opposite her in a musical theatre production. They were the romantic leads. Cliched, right? Yeah. Anyway, as the story always goes, Patrick became quote-unquote close friends with her, but at the same time stopped kissing and hugging me or telling me he loved me. Within weeks, he was on his phone all the time, quiet and reserved, went to events with her and told me I wasn't invited because it would be quote-unquote weird. Then he took my photo off his lock screen. The real clincher was when I saw him messaging her and he changed her nickname to Incredible Girl Loveheart. What the fuck? What? What the actual fuck? Despite all of this, he insisted he wasn't cheating on me, that he was just unhappy in our marriage. That story changed, for the record. He then claimed he never said he was unhappy with our relationship, which was so confusing. Finally, he admitted that they kissed, but they'd never slept together, and he'd had an emotional affair with her. We're still together, but it was a long, hard road back for us. I have a question. Yeah. yeah. For Louis, unless you've been in any stage productions, Annabelle, that I'm unaware of. <laughs> I'm actually, yes. I'm not sure. <laughs> no, no I haven't. Have you ever had, like, a romance with someone you've been playing a role up against? Like, has that ever happened? No, because I've um only played straight relationships <laughs> in plays. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like all of those productions were at school, so I was severely closeted. <laughs> so I, I, <laughs> yeah, Rubes, I was fucking closeted. It was actually a really okay. hard time, Ruby. <laughs> it was a really difficult time. Um, <laughs> oh my god, because this happens. Like you know, you no. see people kiss on set and they fall no. in love. Actually, like, I just wondered. I mean, knowing you, I you did romantic. Oh, oh no, like let it let it be known, like. <laughs> At like the school after parties, yeah. like yeah, I I may have kissed, yes. you know what I mean, um, <laughs> but I never, I, it was never like the person that I was, um, you know, in the show, no, okay, relationship, like yeah. playing yes. their, I don't know, husband or friend, I don't know, yeah, yeah I was yeah. fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's a good point, Ruby, because yeah. this made me think about all the times I fantasized about dating a famous actor. Yeah. And then this is just reminds me, oh, I could never. I could never date like a Paul Meskel who's in a production opposite nah. like the gorgeous Daisy Edgar Jones yeah. and like not feel insecure about that. And that's a me thing. I get jealous. <laughs> I get also, so jealous. Like method acting's real, like, sorry, like you might be actually in love with them and then this could happen. So Yeah. Yeah, hey, I guess the trust has to be there. <laughs> My 36 female husband, 52 male, asked me to flash some road workers. I did, and then he got mad and pushed me out of the car next to them. How do we move on from this? We've been together 10 years, married for six. 
the last two or three years, he started to show less and less interest in me. He does subscribe to a couple of OF accounts, which I'm not bothered about as it's no different to corn, so I know he still has sexual urges. I've tried talking to him a couple of times about this and told him that I'm getting bored and frustrated and he knows I'm willing to try anything sexual, so if there's anything he wants to do to get him motivated, I'll try it. He just says, duly noted, and carries on with his day, which is frustrating. A few nights ago, we had friends around for tea and we got onto the subject of commutes and roadworks with them, saying how their commute has been more than doubled due to a road they use having roadworks. Carol, the wife of the couple, then says, we've found a way to make it more entertaining though, haven't we? To her husband, and then they both started laughing. She then tells us that the roadworks are about three miles long with the groups of workers spread out to maybe seven or eight groups, and they are normally going 10 to 15 miles per hour, so when they get near one of the groups, he beeps and she flashes them and they all cheer. I couldn't believe it as they seemed so straight-laced. That night when they left, my husband was saying how brave it is of them and that we should do it the next morning. I asked if he's sure. This is a man who didn't like when I posted a bikini picture on Facebook. And he said yes, and we even had sex that night for the first time in months, and he initiated it for the first time in years. The next morning, we both had to work, and as soon as he woke up, he mentioned me flashing. I asked if he's sure, and he wasn't just horny talking, and what if the men don't want to be flashed? He said he's sure, and all men want to be flashed. We drive to the road, and we see a group of workmen, and my husband gets all giddy and says, are you ready? I say yes, and he says, now, and beeps his horn, and I lift my top up, and they all cheer. We are going about 10 miles per hour when he suddenly slams on his brakes and tells me to get out. I was in shock. His face is red with anger and he's shouting, get out you effing slag. I start crying and he's leaning over me, opening my car door and then takes off my seatbelt and starts pushing me out. The cars behind him are beeping as he stopped in traffic and he's yelling at the top of his voice. By now, the workers have heard the commotion and two of them are rushing over to help. I turn to look at them and I do. He pushes me really hard and the top half of my body falls out of the car and I put my hands down. My 36 female husband, 52 male, asked me to flash some road workers. I did and then he got mad and pushed me out of the car next to them. How do we move on from this? One of the workers is screaming at my husband and starts trying to open his door. The other worker is by me and quickly drags me out of the car. He told me afterwards he saw my husband put the car in gear and thought he was going to drive off with me hanging out of the car. My husband just left me. I was still only wearing a vest top and pajama shorts and my slippers as he'd wanted to rush out and do this. My phone was in his car and I didn't have any house keys. One of the workers took his jacket off and wrapped me up in that. They took me to a cabin that was their canteen and put the heater on and made me a cup of tea. I was so embarrassed. This lot had seen my boobs and then saw me getting abused and then fall out of a car and then rescued me all in the space of 30 seconds. I kept apologizing to them and said it was his idea, but they said it's okay and it happens a few times a day and they're used to it, but I think they were just trying to make me feel better. They were laughing and joking with me and were all so sweet and funny. They asked if I wanted to ring anyone, but I don't know anyone's number apart from work and I didn't want them picking me up wearing next to nothing from a building site. I asked if I could just ring a taxi, but they said I can't get in the taxi dressed how I am. The man I'm assuming was their team leader told one of them to drive me to wherever I wanted to go, so I asked if I could go to my mom's house about five miles away. They gave me some spare work boots to walk across the mud to the van, and two of them drove me to my mom's, and they were really sweet in making sure that I was okay, and even walked me to the front door. When my mom answered, I was hysterical and crying. And they told her me and my husband had an argument and he left me by the side of the road. My mom offered them a drink and I tried to give them their coat and boots back, but they said it's okay. I told my mom we were driving to McDonald's and got in an argument. I didn't tell her about pushing or anything. She drove me home and let me in with the spare key that she has. I packed some things and went back to my mom's. My husband had been home as my phone was on the table. In five days since he's been calling me non-stop saying he's sorry. He doesn't know what came over him. He said he heard someone shout, nice pair, and it made him angry. My friends are saying leave. His are obviously telling me to give him another chance. I'm 50-50, but if I do stay, I'm going to insist on couples counseling for us both and sex therapy either for him or both of us. He says he doesn't want to involve other people in the relationship. It feels silly to throw it all away over a few seconds of madness, and I should have just said no when he asked me to flash as I know he's quite insecure. I was blinded by finally getting some sex and attention from him and thought I could get more. I took the workers their jacket and boots back and also made them two cakes and bought them 1,000 bags of Yorkshire tea as a thank you.